Oh man, remember that that person over there just got totally slammed. Remember? They came over here and look at this. Whoa! Holy moly. Look at this. No, it's good. I'm not going to go. I'm skating. That was a bad idea. Okay, here we go. All right. Actually, now, look at this. I can't touch anything. No, I'm slammed. I'll be right back. Hang on one second. Actually, we should clean one hand off. This is a good example. See how my hand is totally covered in slime? Look at this. If I open up my fingers, look, look at that. Oh. So, just like my hand is totally covered in slime. Wait, before I do that, how many of you guys are wondering, what does slime have to do with God? Anybody wondering that? Just wondering when that buzzer is going to go off because I want to get signed. Who's really just wondering that? All right, well, we'll find that out here in a little bit. But let's talk about the first one. What does slime have to do with God? Just like my hand or that person over there was totally covered in slime, Jesus totally covered all of our sins. He paid for any sin that we'll ever commit. And he has covered us, just like that person was covered in slime, my hand was covered in slime. He's covered over us so that when God looks at us, he doesn't see the bad things that we've done. He sees all the good things that Jesus could do in you. That's pretty cool. So, he looks like, actually, who's ever seen like a TV show where they get slimed on there and they're so covered you can't even hardly see who they are anymore? And we see something like that. That's not like brain surgery. So that is kind of how it is. When God, when Jesus took our sins, he totally covered us. So that when God looks at us, he doesn't see you. He can see all the good things that Jesus has done. And you know what? He only left us with one choice. But we're going to go into more detail about this in a little bit. Because before we do that, I want to talk about... Uh-oh, we're looking for two people. Big smiles, been paying attention. Miss Anne, do you want to do it? Pick, pick one boy. And Miss Alicia, you want to pick one girl here? One boy, one girl is going to get slimed. Dun, dun, dun. All right, if they pick you and you want to get slimed, then just come on up here. No, you know what? We're going to put you in a suit so you get it on your hands and maybe a little on your face, but nothing else, okay? So your clothes will stay clean. All right. Come on now. Let's hear it for both of them. All right. Here's what you're going to do. You guys are going to put on some suits, kind of like what the person over there was wearing. So that you guys keep your nice clothes looking real nice because you both look real good. So go over there and see Miss, uh, uh, throwing me off with the pink hair. Miss Courtney there with the pink hair and Miss Logan. Just go with them. They're going to get you suited up and ready to get slimed. Let's hear it for them one more time. All right. Well, you know what? Let's switch some things up here. Let's do worship. So everybody stand on up. And let's call for the worship team as loud as you can on the count of three. One, two, three. Are you on?
this video game is awesome. And you play it for a little while, you're like, ah, I beat it, it's fine. It's right. How many guys have ever been that way? Or maybe about sports. You practice, 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 but pretty soon you're like, all right, I want to do something else. How many guys have ever felt that way before? Or maybe playing band instrument. You know, after a little bit of practicing, you're like, okay, I'm getting tired of practicing, I want to try something else. You know, God made us in such a way so that we aren't satisfied with anything in this world. We can try anything. Popularity, lots of friends, video games, and all those kind of things. But nothing really satisfies. It feels like there's an empty spot on the inside. You know, Mr. Mike, I left my clicker somewhere, so you have to click me through. It feels like there's a big hole almost on the, in your heart, on the inside, that no matter what you try, it just can't be filled up. And that's why it's important that we're talking about today. You know that the Bible says that Christ chose us before the world was even made? It does. In the Bible, you can find all kinds of great things. So like, actually, should we have some slime telling fun going on right now? Yeah. Now, this is a little different from a regular scripture race because we're not going to see what scripture we're going to until our slam time kids pick it out of that nose. So let's call for our slam time kids on the count of three. One, two, three. Slam time kids. All right, here they come. All right, you guys are ready. Here's what you're going to do. I'm going to need you to stand on this set. You can even stand in the pool if you want of slime. And you're going to reach up this nostril and find the scripture we're going to. It's the same scripture that you're going to be looking for going up this nostril. There is a scripture up there. You're just going to have to maybe dig deep, really pick that nose. Are you guys ready for that? All right. Stand up in there. Start feeling up that nose. Oh, and I forgot one other thing. Since it's slime time, this isn't just a regular nose, it's a runny nose. And it's going to have all kinds of slime coming down at you. So when you reach up, there's a piece of paper in there, a bright green piece of paper is what you're reaching for. So go ahead, each of you guys put a hand up that nose, start feeling for that piece of, oh man, I slimed myself. Yeah. Alright, reach up there. Both you guys, just put your hand up the nostril. You can stand in there if you want. It'll help you get a better angle. All right, go ahead. Put your arm up the nose. Oh, there's a scripture up there somewhere. Reach up in there. You gotta reach deep in there. It's slimy, but it's in there. Reach on. Oh. Come on, reach real deep, real deep. Reach real deep in that nose. Way up there. Bury your elbow inside the nose. Ooh. It's coming. I know what's in there. You can find it. Oh. All right. Uh-oh. We're almost a one-eyed man there. You got it. All right, nice. Let me grab a microphone here. He said, Ephesians 1, 4. Go, 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 find it as fast as you can. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. Man, that was a ton of slime, wasn't it? All right, you know what? I wasn't watching. I'm sorry. I'm looking for someone who was their first time here for the 11 a.m. service. Someone who hasn't been for 9 a.m. or Saturday. Who was the first person? Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. Miss Bart, who do you think was the first person? Chandler was here for 9 a.m. service. So pick somebody else. Who was the second fastest person you saw? That guy? All right, Colin, come on down. Let's hear it for Colin. Let's call for the slam time. 
cleanup crew to pick these guys up. They're covered in slime. Slime time cleanup crew on three. One, two, three. All right, you two. Be real careful. Now you guys are going to go away in this wheelbarrow. They're going to clean you up and bring you back. Nice and clean, spick and span. All right, you need a hand to get out of there? It's slick, be real careful. Whoa, 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 whoa. You got it? Oh, oh I've been looking at that. Oh. All right, real careful. Man, that is some slimy slime. All right, Mr. Colin, can you read for me Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4? Thank you. Uh, verse, that's chapter 1, verse 4. It starts right, right there, with the word 4 Do you see it? Mm -hmm. Yep. He, for he chose us in holy and blameless in the drink sight of love. He loved, freed, and Adopted as his pleasure and love to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us as the one he loves. All right, nice job. Colin, you know what? I'm going to have you read it one more time because I heard people talking, and that is super disrespectful not only to you but to God because this is his word that he gave us. So, Colin, can you read that again? For he shows us anew before the creation of, of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight and love. He predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ. Okay, that's far enough. Nice job, Colin. Give me five. Oh, sorry, that was my slime again. And go get five tickets. Let's hear it for second ago. Those kids with a hole in their heart. 
And that represents any, any person, every single person that was ever born has that need for God. But you know what? God gave us a gift to fill that hole. Who thinks they know what that gift was? Who thinks they know what that gift was? Let me see. I'm coming over here. What do you think? You think God made the holes to fill with himself? That is exactly right. Go get it together. Let's hear it. Specifically, who did God send? Let's go, let's go specific, because she was right, but I'm looking for a name. I'm looking for a name of someone God sent to fill that hole, and I'll give you a clue. It's not SpongeBob. Alright, let me see. I just picked on a girl I got coming here. Let me see. Excuse me, partner, excuse me, partner, excuse me, partner. Joe, what do you think? Um me? I think he said you? That's a good try. It's not the name I'm looking for, although it starts with the same letter as your name, Joe. Somebody God sent to Earth just for us as a gift. And it starts with the letter J. Who do you think? Jesus. What do you say real name? Jesus. That is exactly right. Go get it, Taylor. Let's hear it. Just so you guys know, I was looking for someone who wasn't a, we don't pick moaners or groaners here. Who's ever heard of that? No moan. We don't pick moaners and groaners. And she was sitting there real nice with a big smile. It was nice. All right. So he sent Jesus to fill that So you guys can step in the pool if you want to get a good angle because that scripture is up there. You just got to dig, pick that nose, pick way up that nose, it's in there. So go ahead, step on into the pool and reach up that nostril. Oh, and remember this nose is a runny nose. So there's more than just a scripture up there. There's going to be a little bit of slime coming down at you here in just a second. You find the scripture yet? Not yet. Keep reaching up there. Reach way up there. It's up there. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah, look at that slime. All right. Did you find it yet? No, keep reaching. So green, oh, we got it coming down the face of the nose, oh. Oh, you know, I see, I see one there. If you're slipping past you, there's one. Oh, I forgot my microphone. Hang on one sec, I'll be right back. All right. All right, which one of you guys wants to read where we're going to in the Bible? Serious? John. John 3.16, that's exactly right. Go, 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 find John 3.16 as fast as you can in your Bible. Once you find it, stand on up. All right. Chris, is this your first service? No? All right. Who was the second? Alicia, who was the second fastest person you saw? Emily, is it your first service? All right, Emily, come on down. Let's get a hand for Emily. You guys are going to load up in those wheelbarrows and 
Go get cleaned off, all right? Be real careful, it's slippery. Real slippery, hang on, whoa! All right. There you guys go. Look at that, slime is just sticking to their feet. They're leaving a trail of slime all across this stage. It's sticky. Look at this, guys. Look how sticky this is. That is nasty, isn't it? Look at this. Oh, oh my cow just got it all over myself again. All right. All right, Emily. Can you read into this microphone, John 316, for me? For God so loved the world that he gave his only, that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Nice job. Give me five and then oh, I'll just give up. And go get five tickets. That's here for him. Because sometimes you think your head tries to tell you it'll keep you out of trouble. 
Who's ever had those thoughts? You know, if I just tell a lie right now, I'm not going to get in trouble, and that's probably the best thing to do. We've all attempted to do wrong. The Bible says everyone has done stuff wrong, which is sin. Doing Sin is doing what God doesn't want you to do, or not doing what God wants you to do. We've all sinned, but Jesus has paid for it, and he's left us with just a choice to serve him. And it comes with great rewards. One of them, heaven. How many of you guys would like to live forever in heaven? Oh yeah. Where streets are made of gold. Gold so worthless that you walk on it. You drive on it. It's where you spit your gum. No, you don't spit your gum on the street. Don't do that. And not only that, but when you ask Jesus into your life, the Holy Spirit comes up inside, changes you, makes you a brand new creature so that you have God's ability to always do what's right. Honey, God would like that. Always to be able to always do what's right. It's a pretty good gift. And it's the best decision you'll ever make in your entire life. So you know what? I'm going to have Miss Erica come out here. She's going to lead you in a salvation prayer because I want to give you guys an opportunity today to make the choice.
end of it. Oh! Real careful, Amari. All right, all right. There you go. Stand right. Step forward just a little bit. Right there. Here's your pull string. Don't pull it yet! All right, and whoo. Man, that is slick. All right. And you step forward just a little bit. All right, right about there. Now, who should we have go first, boys or girls? We always want to show honor and prefer girls, so I suppose we're going to have to make girls go first. All right, you ready for this? Whenever you're ready, pull that string. It's slick, it's 
slippery and slime. All right, I'm gonna wave and say goodbye. All right. Hey, what do you guys think? Do you think we should slime one of the workers under the? Under the Hey, let's do Mr. Dan Lee. Hang on, let me find Mr. Dan 